hello you are welcome to thy004 soteriology class lesson eight let us pray father thank you for this lesson holy spirit take control bless us in your word in jesus name amen in lesson seven we were talking about the doctrine of redemption and we defined what redemption means we looked at the first shadow of the new testament redemption in the old testament in the book of leviticus chapter 25 and we saw that someone who will redeem must be a near kinsman we further said redemption is holy of god and um, that it is through a person jesus christ and it was perfected by his blood and redemption is by power we lastly said redemption the word redemption is presented in three ways the first one to buy or purchase in a slave market the lord jesus christ came down into the slave market of sin and bought us he bought us he purchased us out of the market the second meaning of the word redemption connotes to purchase out of the market after one purchased a slave the master took him out of the market we are looking for our master to come and take us out of this slave market so jesus christ took us out of the market of sin he made us his own children and one day is coming back to take us completely out of this old world which represents slave market he will he will come back he will take us away and the third meaning of redemption is to lose or set free to lose or set free the lord jesus christ is not a slave trader he set us free with his blood so that we become his own children we become his brothers and sisters members of the family of god joint ears with him and by that we have every right to everything that belongs to god and jesus christ all his promises from the book of genesis to revelation belongs to us we can claim them because we are redeemed under this um, soteriology class the part one this is the introduction to soteriology we will not finish soteriology now we will have second part later if you successfully uh, complete this uh, basic certificate course you will move on to advanced certificates we will be expecting you but today to round off this um, um soteriology part one i will want to talk about repentance 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 is a key doctrine in the bible in those days came john the baptist preaching in the wilderness of judea and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand i read from matthew chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. you know repentance is so important that john the baptist was preaching repentance and when jesus christ himself our lord himself started preaching the bible says jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand you can find that one in matthew chapter 4 verse 17. nobody can be reconciled to god without repentance we have said that uh, reconciliation to god is initiated by god and executed by god and you do not have to do anything to be reconciled back to god salvation is by grace and we have said that grace means unmerited favor something you do not work for that is given to you freely freely but what is expected of you is that you should repent 
Nowadays, many people come to the church through many routes, many gates, many doors. Some come to church through the gates of I'm um, looking for children. I've been married for two, three or more years. I want children. Therefore, I join a church so that I can be praying and God will answer my prayer. Some come in through the door of sickness. They are looking for healing. Some come because they are looking for uh, husband or wife. Some come because they believe there is a curse placed upon them. They want God to remove the curse. Whatever door one passes through to come into the church, if he does not pass through the door of repentance, that person is deceiving himself or, or herself. He is not known by God. God does not know, know him. It is only when you repent, when someone repents, that God will forgive him his sins. It is someone who is forgiving, whose sins is forgiven, that becomes sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ and is holy. Until you are sanctified and become holy, you cannot become a member of the family of God. You are still under the kingdom of darkness. Therefore, uh, repentance is very, very key. We cannot finish soteriology without mentioning the doctrine of repentance. Paul testified both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That is written in the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 21. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 19, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. The Lord Jesus Christ emphasizes repentance. Repentance is at two stages. Repentance at the initial stage where a man comes out of the kingdom of darkness, comes out of sin, and gives his life or her life to Jesus Christ. Then after someone has become a child of God, you still have to repent of any sin you commit with, during your relationship with God and mankind. That is why the Bible says if we commit sin, we can ask for forgiveness. God will forgive us. So God of heaven does not joke with repentance there is no way you can relate with him without repentance in first john chapter 2 verse 1 the bible says my little children these things write i unto you that ye sin not if any man sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world so jesus christ has used his blood to make propitiation for our sins in first john chapter 1 verse 8 the bible says if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins that is verse 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and its word is not in us. This thing he wrote it to believers. So this explains the fact that after the first repentance, which brings us in into the kingdom of God and out of the kingdom of darkness, we still need to be repenting, have a culture of repentance. We will not, when we become born again, we do not willfully sin anymore. We don't deliberately commit sin again. But 
we can commit sin without knowing or by mistake. So if you commit sin, maybe by omission, what you are not supposed to do, you did, or what you are even supposed to do, you did not do, that is omission. When you do what you are not supposed to do, that is sin of commission. Sin of omission, when you do not do what you are supposed to do. You can ask God for forgiveness and he will forgive you. This is part of the process of preparing ourselves for the returning of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whether people believe it or not, our Lord Jesus Christ will come back. And those that will go with him will not be people that are living in sin. Let me read to you. First John chapter 3, I read from verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In verse 10. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness, righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. And that is the word of God. If you are, you are living in sin, you don't do righteousness. The Bible says you are not of God. If you are of God, if you are born again, you will be living a holy life. And if by mistake you commit sin, you will repent and you will go to God for forgiveness. And is ever willing, ever ready to forgive. There is no sin that man will commit that God will not forgive. For as long as you still believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, it is those that reject Christ, that reject Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that will not receive any forgiveness of sin. There is no forgiveness outside of Jesus Christ. My beloved, how are you preparing for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? This is the last lesson of this soteriology class. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 21, the Lord Jesus Christ said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. I pray that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. If you have not given your life to Jesus, please tell him to forgive you your sins. Confess your sins to him. He will forgive you. If you have given your life to Jesus, you are living in sin. Please repent. Ask him for forgiveness. It doesn't matter the magnitude of the sin. Even if you have killed some people, he will forgive you. Even if you are a witch, he will forgive you. Call unto him, he will forgive you. I pray for you, you will not go to hell fire. I pray for you, the Lord will uphold you. Your life will glorify God. In Jesus' name, amen.